Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Samacon lithium iron phosphate portable generator. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this portable generator seems very similar to the Watt Fund and the Small Eco generators. They look absolutely identical. They have the same watt hour rating. I got this model because it was the cheapest of the three, but I'll put links below to all three models and you can look between the three in case the price changes on some of the others. So this is what they call a portable generator. Generator. It's really just a battery with the electronics connected to it. This doesn't actually generate anything. You do have to charge it. And in this video, I'm just going to be going over the unboxing of it and talk about the features a little bit. So if we look at the front here, the battery capacity says lithium iron phosphate, 298 watt hours. So this does have a lithium iron phosphate battery as opposed to a lithium ion battery or an older generation might've had lead acid. So a couple of the advantages of lithium iron phosphate is that they can last a long time. So this is rated for 2000 cycles, but once it hits that, it might drop the capacity down, but then it'll still work. Lithium iron phosphate is also less likely to catch on fire. Now this is an electronic device. Things can overheat and shorten side of it potentially and start a fire. That's with any electronic. But lithium iron phosphate over lithium ion, traditional lithium ion, are supposed to be the safer battery type. These can also tolerate heat better. So if this is sitting in the back of a hot car, it's less likely to damage it. And even if it does get damaged a little bit, damages the cells, they'll still work. They just may not have full capacity. So it says three different ways of charging. So you can charge this with 12 volt car. You can charge it with the 120 volt, or you can charge it with solar. That does not come with solar. It says built-in lithium battery, emergency power supply for outdoors. So this does have a pure sine wave inverter. Now I don't have a way to test that, but I've seen other videos where people have tested that. Here are the specs on the side. It says AC output voltage is 110 volts, plus or minus 10%, 320 watts max. The USB ports are two by 18 watt max. Type C port is power delivery 60 watt. The DC port is DC 5521, two times 12 volts, four amps max. The car port is 12 volt, 10 amps max. LED lighting is four watt LED lighting. And these are the three ways of recharging, which I talked about the dedicated adapter has DC's 19 volts at 3.75 amps. The solar charging is 12 to 24 volts. The car cigarette lighter charging voltage is 12 volts with LCD display shows the parameters. Here's some marketing materials on the back. It says peak power below 640 watts and rated power below 320 watts. And it gives some examples, laptop, drone, table lamp, mini fridge, fan, camera, string lights, or tablets. So let me get this open here. Oh, I do want to mention that this was damaged on the side when I opened the box. It was in a cardboard box and it had some inflated packaging there and you can see this got smashed in. But we'll open the box here and I did already check this. It didn't seem to make it into the box. There's some foam on this corner and it didn't seem to damage this at all. It seems to be packaged very well. We have a warranty registration card. There's a user manual. So you'll want to read through this whole thing to make sure you're using it safely. This is what it comes with. These are the parts of the product. You can pause this if you want to read through this. I will be going over some of this. It talks about charging it with solar panels and things like that. And here it talks about battery life. It says the station is designed to retain up to 80% of its original capacity at 2000 complete charge cycles when operating under normal conditions. This could last well beyond that too. So this talks about estimation of backup time, has a formula in here you can use. So I don't quite understand this. It says 20 watt LED lamp is 1.3 hours. And then it says 200 watt electric stewing pot is 1.2 hours. So I'm not sure what that calculation is. So you'll want to read through all that. Take this out of here. So here it is. I'm going to get a quick weight on this. So it looks like about nine pounds, I think. So this has a handle on top. Let's look at the side parts first. It has some vent fans, a vent. Here's a label on the back. We have rubber feet on the bottom. Let's look at the front. Now, it didn't say it in the documentation, but I'm guessing you can have this in any orientation as long as you're not blocking those fans. But here we have a power button. This is an LED light. So this would be handy if you're in a tent or something, you just need a quick light. You can turn this on. You're obviously not going to use this like a flashlight and carry it around. I mean, you could, but most people would not do that. And there's the button to turn that on. And then we have the different sections where you can get power out of this. This is the 12 volts DC, and there's a button to turn it on. And we have the USB. There's a button to turn that on, and we have AC. Now, to convert the lithium iron phosphate batteries in here to 12 volts USB, or the 120 volts or 110 volts, it has to go through circuitry. So it has buttons to turn that on because you don't want those just running all the time. It would run the battery down. And we do have a sticker we can pull off here. 
for the display. Okay, here's the DC input, it's 12 volts to 24 volts, and there's reset. I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe if it overheats or something, you can reset it. So one thing to consider with lithium batteries is you don't want to freeze them below freezing, and I don't know if this has freeze protection built into it. So I don't plan on trying to charge this if it's below freezing, but that's something to keep in mind if you were wanting to use this for ice fishing or something, is you don't want to charge it if it's frozen. So let's look in the accessory pouch here. Okay, this is a charger for the device, and this is 19 volts at 3.75 amps. We already saw that, it's 71 watts. Comes with a standard connector here. Now this looks like a long cord, this is a long cord. If you don't need a long cord, you can get really short versions of this. So it's nicer using a standard cord there. This would be to hook it up to a solar panel. So that would plug in the front, and this plugs in the front, and this is your car charger. So you would plug this in here, and you plug this into the 12 volts of your car. So all of the charging methods use this 12 to 24 volt input on the front. So I will turn it on real quick. We'll hold down the power, okay? Turn this light off here. You can see it says it has 99 hours here. It's 81% charge. We can turn on, here's DC, USB, and AC. You can turn all these on at the same time. Turn on the light. There's different brightness levels there. So it starts off dim. There's three brightness levels and that's pretty bright. And we'll hold that down to turn it off. So I'll try plugging something in. Okay, I have a laptop charging cable. I'll plug this in. Okay, I think I just ran into a problem here. When I plug this in, I hit the AC button. So I'll hit that again. Plug that in. Okay, so now it's adjusting, telling us how many hours we have left and how much it's drawing. So it's drawing seven watts and we have 24 hours of battery left. Let me do that. So that's pretty slick. Now, with a laptop, that's not going to be super accurate because as your laptop charges up, this is going to go down. Now, one reason I bought this is to use with a CPAP machine, so that's a pretty constant rate that that will run. Of course, we can also do things like charge a phone, so I can plug that in. This phone's already charged, but it should draw something, I would think. And a device like this seems kind of overkill to just charge a phone. There's smaller battery packs that can charge your phone many times. But if you're using this for other things, you could use it to charge your phone. Okay, so it is drawing about 4 watts, and it says it will last 61 hours doing this. I'll get a quick measurement of this too. It's a little under 7 and 3 eighths. It's about 6 and a quarter there and about six and three quarters inches tall. So I really like the size of this. This will easily fit in the back of my car when we go camping. It seems like it's going to have a lot of power. I like that it has lithium iron phosphate battery so I can get a long life out of this. I really don't want to get one of these and use it for three years and throw it away. So I'm hoping this will last. So I'm hoping to do some follow-up videos where I actually test the capacity of this with some different devices. If there's anything you want me to test it on, drop a comment below. I can't make any promises, obviously, but I'm always looking for ideas. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you can do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.